This is Anthony Priscilla, and today we're going to be solving exponential equations that have a common base. Uh, an exponential equation, I've already mentioned, has a exponent that appears in the, uh, excuse me, has a variable appearing in the exponent. And if we just wanted a very basic equation to solve, we could solve something like this. All of you can do this. Just sort of by inspection, looking at it. 7 raised to the x power equals 49. What exponent would x have to be? Yes, someone said it right off. 2. How did you decide on two? Well, what your brain is doing here, and it might be doing it so fast you're not even realizing, it's taking 49 and writing it as seven squared, or thinking of it as seven squared. And then, okay, if the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. So x equals two. Notice you couldn't have solved something like 7 to the x equals 25 in this way. Your brain is going to think 7 to what power gives 25? It can't figure that out. Okay? We'll discuss how to solve stuff like this uh, when we're discussing logarithms. So we're getting close to discussing logarithms. Now you might wonder, why did I write it like this? It's just so obvious. It won't always be so obvious, perhaps. Let's solve sixteen to the x power equals four. Hmm. Sixteen to the x power is four. Well, Looking at the larger number, I'm going to think to myself, can I write 16 as 4 to a power? And the answer is yes. I could write 16 as 4 squared. So we have 4 squared. I'm replacing this blue 16 with that red 4 squared. We still have that x up there. Equals 4. Now, there's not an exponent up here, but we can sure imagine on this 4 here, but we can sure imagine that it's 4 to the first power. Now, do y'all remember your properties of, of exponents? What am I going to do here when I have one exponent being raised to another one like that? What do we do to those exponents? Do you add, subtract? Yes, multiply. That's right. So we have 4 to the 2x equals 4 to the first. And now like this one up here, once you have it written with that same base, just base to a power equals base to a power, if those are the same base, then the exponents must be equal. And so what I'm about to do is just drop the big 4s and write 2x must equal 1. Is this an equation we know how to solve? Oh yeah, very easily. Divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 1 half. Now, um, maybe we should review the rules of exponents. What are these rules of exponents that I'm assuming you're familiar with? So, Let's write those down now. These are just uh, properties of exponents. You would have seen them in a previous math course. Uh, I think I'll write them right here. Properties or rules of exponents. These are the ones I'm going to assume you're familiar with. First one, you use all the time. You're going to multiply like bases, a to the m times a to the n, you add the exponents. Every time you go x times x is x squared. That's what you're doing, is adding those exponents. 
So to multiply common bases, we add the exponents. To divide common bases, we subtract the exponents. You have x cubed over x squared, and you can't sort it in just with an x. The third exponent, or the third rule is our definition of a zero exponent. a to the zero power equals one. Generally, we'll say anything to the zero power is one, with one exception. Zero to the zero power is undefined. If you try to punch that into your calculator, you'll get a undefined, not a, uh, not the number one. The fourth rule is the one I used right here. Generally, in algebra, to get rid of parentheses, you wind up multiplying something. And the same thing's true here. A to the M raised to the N. A to the M times N. Number five is our definition of a negative exponent. A to the negative n power a negative exponent means 1 over that negative exponent means 1 over a to the positive power that's going to be very significant we're going to use that quite a bit throughout all of this so just to make sure let's see if y'all can do this problem What's 5 to the negative 2 power? Don't say negative 10 or negative 25, whatever the common an wrong answers are. A negative exponent means 1 over, and then just 5 to the positive 2 power. So 5 to the negative 2 is not negative 10. It is not negative 25. What is it? It's 1 over 25. And our sixth rule, definition of a fractional exponent. A to the 1 over over n power. If you have an exponent in the form 1 over n, and we've used this before, a fractional exponent just means a radical. Okay. And this bottom number, that's the root. So a to the 1 over n means the nth root of a. If the exponent had been one half, it'd be the square root. If the exponent had been one third, the cube root. An exponent of one fourth would be a fourth root, and so forth. So these rules of exponents here, you need to get familiar with them because we're going to be using those a lot here and in our discussion of logarithms. Okay? You're wondering what the heck the exponents have to do with logarithms? Well, you're going to see logarithms are exponents. Okay? Let's do this problem right here. 2 to the 2x minus 1 equals 16. Well, the way we're going to do that is to get the common base. Here our common base is 2. We've got to rewrite a 16 with a big 2. How many 2's do we need to multiply together to get a 16? Well, if you're thinking 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 1 more 2 is 16. 2 to the 4th power would give us 16. What's the bases are equal? The exponents have to be equal. So just, you're going to drop the big 2's and set 2x minus 1 
equal to a positive 4. So move the 1 over by adding 1 to both sides and then divide by 2. So this answer here is 5 over 2. Let's find another one. Hmm. Number 5 is very much like this. In this assignment, I've sort of made pairs for everything. 4 and 5 are sort of mirror image problems. Do it the same way. Here you would rewrite 9 as what? 3 squared. Number 10, if you look closely, that's an E. And you might be thinking, well, what the heck is an E? Well, in the lowercase letter E denotes an irrational number, 2.718281828. It's a lot of nice applications, which unfortunately we're not going to be seeing in this uh, assignment here. Oh, for our purposes, if you see E being used as a base, that's the common base. Okay. So number six, and 7. Both of these have E's. Notice they're the same type of problem. So I'll just do 6. You're going to write it without those, the right hand side without the parentheses. We'd have E to the 10x minus 1 equals now how do I rewrite this without those parentheses? That's an E to the 8 raised to the x. Well you multiply. That's going to be an e to the 8x power and now do we have a common base on both sides? Yeah, so just drop the e's and we're going to solve the equation 10x minus 1 equals 8x. How do we want to do that? Well, I think I'll move the 8x over here and the 1 there. So we have 10x minus 8x, that's a 2x. Moving the 1 over here, you'd be adding 1 to both sides. Divide by 2. So number 6, the answer would be 1 half. Number seven, exactly the same type of problem. Number eight. Let's do number eight. And I'm not sure if I have enough room for it right there. So I'm going to write it on a sheet of paper right here. This is number eight. Sixty-four to the 3x power equals 16 to the x plus 1 power. Now this one is going to begin to show you why this old process of getting a common base is so nice to solve that. You're just going to try to guess at an answer. I think it might take you a while. Well, First of all, I'm going to look at the smaller base. The base is the big number, exponents are the small one. I'm going to look at the smaller base and ask myself, how do I, <coughs> uh, how can I get a common base? Could I rewrite 64 as 16 to some power? Here's what I'm asking myself. Could I write this 64 as 16 to a power? Well, no. 16 times 16, 16 squared, for instance, is not going to give you 64. So, let's come to the 16 and think, okay, how can I rewrite 16? Well, I could rewrite 16 as 4 squared. Look over here. Can I write 64 with a big 4? 
How many fours would I need to multiply together to get a 64? Let's see. Here's my little reverse notation calculator. Oh, I'm not sure if y'all can see it. 4 times 4, that's 16, times 1 more 4 is 64. So if the glare is too bad and you can't see that, uh, take my word for it. 4 to the 3rd is 64. 4 to the 3rd power is 64. So I'm rewriting 16 squared, excuse me, 16 is 4 squared. I'm rewriting 64 as 4 cubed raised to the 3x power, the x plus 1 power. Now write it with just one big 4. You're going to have to multiply 3 times 3x, that's a 9x. Over here, remember, you distribute over addition and uh, subtraction. So you're going to have to, when you're multiplying, you're going to have to distribute that too. So 2x plus 1. And then, once you have the same base, the only way these can be equal is if the exponents are equal. So I'm going to set 9x equal to 2x plus 1. And we finally have something pretty easy to solve. Subtract the 2x from both sides. That's a 7x. So we have 7x equals 1. Divide both sides by 7. 1 over 7 is our answer there. Hmm. Let's take a brief break and then we'll return and do some more of these.